Hey guys, how's it going? Val here with another video that I wasn't really planning on making, but uh, I've been seeing a lot of new players and or returning players coming back to the game due to the hype for BS6. So I thought I'd go ahead and make a movement video on all of the current BF4 movement tech that is used. Getting right into it, there's two key bindings you're going to need to set up in order to do most of these mechanics. So you're going to want to go to key bindings on foot and scroll all the way to the bottom here. You're going to want to set a key binding for a toggle primary weapon, which is on my mouse button one and select knife, which I have on mouse button two. Uh, in this video, I've also included a key input uh, thing on the bottom left of my screen, just in case my description doesn't do it for you. You can uh, watch my key inputs, which will hopefully help you understand a bit more. So getting into it, uh, let's go ahead and hop into the two basics of BF4 infantry gameplay. We have air strafing, which is essentially just the ability to control your character's movements and or direction in air. As you can see here, I'm kind of like flicking the mouse and you can change the direction mid air. Uh, that's what air strafing is and it becomes very useful. Uh, the most common form that you see this used in gameplay is people doing stuff like this. Uh, really what you can do is you can juke people out, they'll think you're going one way and shoot that way and you're going the other and you can just kind of juke them out and destroy them from there. Super useful. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a clip of some of the possible uses for this, but... Uh, yeah, you can do stuff like this. I'm sure if you've watched any of my videos, you'll see it used, but yeah, that's air strafing. The second basic thing that you should probably know about BF4 movement is the bunny hopping in BF4. Uh, bunny hopping in BF4 is slightly different from other games like CSGO and Apex in the fact that it doesn't necessarily increase how fast you are going, but more so just lets you jump without losing momentum. Uh, this is what it looks like when you uh, jump without bunny hopping. As you can see here, you eventually stop. It's literally a dead stop, and you'll jump slower and slower as you go. Uh, so to counteract that, you just jump and then let go of all of the movement keys as seen here. You can tell you're doing it right because there's a little slide at the end. You can do this any direction, front to back. However, uh, once you kind of get the basics of b-hopping down, you can then start to add in a crouch at the end of each bunny hop, which would look something like this. In gameplay, you would also add in AV ADS, obviously, so it looks something like this. A lot of people, you'll see them jumping back and forth like this and in between enemies that they frag. Kind of make it your own. Once you get that down, you can go on to the second layer of B hopping that I don't see really many people talk about. Um, I don't know if I'm the first to discover this, I'm probably not, don't really know, but uh, this is where the knife keybind that I told you about comes into play. And essentially what you're going to want to do is um, the same thing as the previously mentioned bunny hopping, but instead you're adding a knife um, swap at the beginning. Um, and then swapping back to your main at the end. So it would look something like this. And you may be like, well, Veil, what does this do for you? Well, it eliminates the really annoying weapon sway that the normal crouch has and kind of removes some of the ADS time. Um, so that's my form of B-hopping. And then this is regular B hopping. You can see you get this weird sway on it. Um, so yeah, the knife kind of removes that. And yeah, that's the more advanced B hopping that you can learn. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Vuzu, another very basic, very simple uh, BF4 movement mechanic. All you're going to need for this is a solid wall. Uh, both client and server side 
has to see the wall as a solid so something like this works perfectly um for example some of these walls like these don't count as solid walls so uh, if you did it on one of those you wouldn't receive the glitched animation but all you're going to want to do for this is run jump let go of your movement keys and then hold the r and b or scope um, at the earliest time possible so it would look something like this And as I said before, this is a glitched animation on their screen. Your hitbox is basically in the floor and you're almost unhittable for at least the start of the glitched animation. After that, um, you start standing back up and then they can hit you, which uh, is more or less the counter. Just a wait until their player model starts standing up. But yeah, that's a Zuzu. Moving on from that, we're going to be getting into the slightly more advanced mechanics, uh, starting with the Slither or the Muzu, as some people like to call it. And this is where you're going to be utilizing the toggle primary weapon bind. I told you to set up earlier, so hopefully you did that. And realistically, all you're going to want to do for this is find a object and or rail to vault or mantle. And you're going to want to run up uh, parallel to it swap weapons twice and then hit mantle or spacebar and then flick away from whichever direction you're doing it so over here we're going to flick to the right and this is what it would look like uh, the farther you flick out the um, faster and farther your animation will go and this is another glitched animation uh, you're you're basically not hittable in this one until you come out of it at this end. But yeah, uh, just swap weapons twice, and then vault the objects. You can also just do this once. Um, say you're out of ammo in your main weapon, and you just want to swap and then slither. You can also do that. You don't necessarily have to hit it twice for this one. Um, if you can also get the timing, you can throw a med pack and then do it. Um, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. Another important thing to mention when talking about slithering though is that this does fuck with your aim. Um, when you're coming out of the animation, you see your sight or your reticle kind of like bounces a little and goes to the top of the scope. It's inaccurate. Uh, so you kind of have to aim a lot lower when going through the animation and you're trying to shoot at the earliest time possible. If you're waiting till the end, it's not as big of a deal, but yeah. I feel like a lot of people also don't mention that you can actually cancel this animation. Um, I don't see a lot of people do this and I don't really understand why it's super useful, super helpful and kind of removes the aspect of uh, it fucking with your aim. And to cancel it, you can either use the knife bind as mentioned earlier that I told you to set up or you can just crouch at the animation which looks something like this. And then it doesn't mess with your aim. My aim is perfectly fine, and it also puts you in the crouch state. Um, if you use the knife, it's a little bit more finicky for whatever reason, but you instantly stand up, um, which can be a little bit more helpful. After you swap, you can uh, swap to your main or your primary weapon, rather. So yeah, you can, in fact, cancel a slither. Next, we're going to be talking about one of the two hardest movement tech in Battlefield 4 infantry gameplay, uh, which is going to be the Vuzu. And for the Vuzu, you're going to sprint, throw your med pack or hit your med pack key, uh, look at the ground. There's a very specific angle you have to find. I'm showing it here, but again, you're going to have to find it in your own gameplay. And then uh, hit space, as you can see in the key inputs. So run, medpack key, look at the ground in a specific angle, and then vault it, essentially. This is going to be hard for you at first, but obviously if you practice it more, it, you get more consistent, and you can basically hit it every time, as shown here. Uh, you can also do this while standing still. There's some situations, uh, say this for instance, if, you were, if this was like a wall and you were trying to peek out this way with a Vuzu, uh, you can stand still. 
you're gonna want to hit med pack key first so that's four for me uh sprint a little bit while the animation is playing and then do the same thing which would look like this obviously uh, this is much harder though because you have much less time to hit the keys um, so i would learn how to do it running first personally and yeah that's how to boozu Another movement technique with the Vuzu that I would only advise to people that can do it rather consistently and or um, are really good at the mechanic. Um, you can basically enhance your Vuzu. Um, I don't really know how to word it, but uh, you can make it go farther and faster if you do it next to a wall. Um, like this if you go at it like an at an angle you kind of got to go at it like a 45 degree angle and pull out your protractor um you can basically like push yourself off of walls and it, it makes the animation a lot longer and um a little bit faster it's kind of weird to get used to but as you can see there uh, it's kind of interesting and cool i figured i might also mention that the vuzu is also the best um and or you get the most glitched animation going off big drops or stairs like this. Um, if you vuzu off of things like this, your character like freezes mid-air. Um, it's super weird and yeah, it's like one of the better ways to use vuzu is off of staircases and huge drops. Like over here, for example, if you vuzu this, uh, your character would be in a super like fucking laggy animation. It's way harder to hit than like a normal Vuzu. I also feel like I should mention um, another move that I feel like a, not a lot of people talk about. Um, I don't think there's really a name for this one in the community and I don't really see many people use it for whatever reason. I guess it is probably one of the uh, two hardest moves along with the Vuzu. Uh, just because the timing is very specific with this one. And all you're really gonna have to do is swap weapons twice after jumping. Uh, so you're going to want to jump, swap weapons twice with the keybind I showed earlier, and then crouch twice at the end of the jump animation. Looks like this. I hit it twice at the beginning, but, uh... There we go. Looks like that. Um, basically what this allows you to do is instantly put up your jump, or, uh... Instantly put up your jump. Instantly put up your sight after a jump. <laughs> Uh, you can turn this into a B hopping strategy, but the timing is so specific. Uh, you have to be a god to be able to B hop like this, but uh, I've seen people do it. It's definitely possible if you put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, I can hit a good streak every once in a while, but um, you can use this to jump corners and stuff. It's, it's just another way to jump a corner, really, or you can turn it into a uh, B hop style if you're a god. Um, yeah, I wouldn't advise this for most normal players. It's kind of high APM for your average gamer. Kind of interesting to learn and to master nonetheless, though, so there you go. Uh, for the final two moves, they're more like freestyle moves. Not really that useful, but they're kind of cool. You can get into some cool places with them. They're kind of fun. Uh, we're going to talk about the Mario jump first. And there's two ways to activate a Mario jump. One, where you put the, the med bag in front of whatever you're vaulting and or trying to jump over. And you can also put it on top as seen here. Um, so you kind of got to run it at an angle and then it gives you a Mario jump. Uh, simple as that. Again, this isn't really that useful for everyday gameplay, but it's kind of fun. You can get some cool clips with it. You can juke people with it. Uh, and the second way is to put it slightly in front of. But you want a little space in between, and then you kind of got to get this one at an angle like this. Um, sometimes it will get this weird tripping animation, but you don't really have to worry about it too much if you find the correct angle. That was the tripping animation, but yeah, that's the more you jump. And for one of the final tips I'm going to give, it's going to be the defib cancel which is basically just a way to cancel the ending animation of the defibs and really all you have to do is swap weapons. Um, I just go to my primary and yeah, it just cancels the end animation which normally locks you in this short little animation as you can see at the end here where you can't really jump or anything. So I think it's kind of useful to mention. 
And that's pretty much going to do it for the movement guide and tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you as always. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Peace.